Hiya, welcome to my channel. Today's video is about how to reproduce those wood panels at home. I'm actually quite excited about doing this video because I'm finally sat down with a working camera and no bad ratios. I tried to uh, record this video before but unfortunately got frustrated about the camera and the sound and I ended up filming it on my phone uh, from a very awkward angle so it was absolutely awful. If you want to have a look at it, it's still on my videos listed and you can see how terrible it is. Right. We've done those wood panels, my partner and I. It took us four days to do it. And I'll show you a before picture here, so you see how it looks like. Uh, I've got a blog post about it, actually, uh, on my website, which is mymindfulhome.co.uk. And everything you need is on the blog post, but I decided to make a video out of it because I feel like it's easier to just listen to someone telling you what that person has done. With wood panelings, um, there's a huge array of designs that you can go for. We decided to go for double frames, as you can see here, which is not too common. I'd say like the, the majority of the wood panelling frames you'd see up would be a single panel, but we decided to go for double. We have a dado rail in the middle, and I'm going to tell you the dimensions of, of each of the items. We have a full wall which is about 3 meters 30 length. And we did a small panel, a big panel, a big panel, a small panel. So we created the architectural symmetry between um, the panels. So the smaller ones are the same size, the bigger ones are the same size. And the reason why I designed it like this is because I wanted to have those uh, frames up. Two frames like this. So there's one that you can see here and there's the same one on the other side. Which you could see in that picture. You may wonder how to come up with the design. So how I've done it is I took the measurement of the full wall, then I decided what type of furniture I was gonna have in front of it. Uh, I've got a table where you could have a sofa and you could decide if you'd rather have one full frame that sort of goes around or just meets the furniture that is standing in front of it or if you wanna do two frames, you know, um, and they also end up lying down with the piece of furniture in front of it. Um, mine was because of my two A1 frames that I've decided to go for two big frames and then two small ones. So I've designed it on SketchUp. I've decided that there's 10 centimeters between the larger frames. There's 10 centimeters above the frame until it touched the coving. And then here there's about 5.5 centimeters. So once I've done this uh, computer design, we scoped all the works that needed to be done and we went to a few stores to check out what type of architrave they had. Uh, that's important, but also it's very difficult, even if you do a design, to visualize how a specific architrave design will look like. So I've purchased a few samples. I brought the samples back home and I then decided which ones did I wanted and once I've made my selection we went to the shop and we bought the material that we needed which I'm gonna list in a second. So the first step of the installation is to actually draw with a pencil the frames, especially the outer frames. So that's what I've done. I've proceeded with using a pencil and a 90 centimeter spirit level and a ruler to effectively just draw massive frames around the wall, making sure you know that the distance from the extremities of the wall were as per my design, 10 centimeters one way, then I started one line, then 10 centimeters above I started another line, etc. So I, it ended up drawing the frames. It took actually a lot of time to do that, uh, maybe, I don't know, like three hours because it's quite tiring and you take a break, etc. What you need to cut and fix the frames is the following. No. You need a fine saw, a meter box, glue and adhesive, a nail gun and a 90 degree ruler or I think it's called a 
set square here. It's called a set square. Then to complete the look, you're gonna need wood filler in a gun format, fine grade sanding paper, sponge and water bucket, and paint for the frames. Now you may be wondering uh, which type of architrave we decided to go for. For the external frames, we purchased 12 pine wood architraved in the following format 32 by 12 by 240. And for the internal frames, we purchased 12 and the size is 22 by 09 by 240. So you may wonder how much does that all cost costed us. So roughly um, the cost estimate were based on the wood plus the nails we used, plus the adhesive, because uh, the rest of it we had already. Uh, the roughly cost estimate for this DIY was 170 pounds. Right, so I explained you how I started the installation by uh, drawing on the walls directly with a pencil. Then the next step was to do the install. And once you've got the lines already drawn and measured and you know properly square it's a good starting point but it's not the end of it because uh, at least if you're in a period property there's a lot of irregularities with the walls and uh, what looked like a straight wall might be some way wobbly uh, we found that out uh, in the house by doing other jobs um, yeah well actually doing the cornice was a freaking nightmare because of uneven walls. I've got a trick for you on this one, which is on how we went about to do the install of the panels. So I'll try to put some pictures here so that you could see how um, it looks like. So the steps is as follow. You can start with either the bottom frames or the bigger frames, it's up to you. We decided to go for the easiest part <laughs> first. Uh, which means the lower panels uh, and then we went to and we did the top panels so we started with the top of the architrave which obviously my partner cut with the meter so uh, previously to the right dimension as per my um, drawings and he cut them all those pieces which took him a very long time as well and that's why we decided to go again yeah, now like we're both tired I'm tired about stenciling it out on the wall he's tired about sewing like a crazy person because we didn't have the automatic tools that you have you know those tools that goes here yeah, we didn't have that, so he was just like sewing all of them. And you can imagine there's a lot of corners here. So you take the top architrave of the frame, you put glue on it, and then you place it to the wall and you nail it. Because that's gonna be sort of your baseline. Then you take the side piece, it doesn't matter which side. You put some glue on it again and you're gonna place it next to the top wood frame and make sure that the angle is 90 degrees. You could maybe put a nail at the top, then you go down, you just leave it like that so you don't nail the bottom just yet. Then you go on the other side, the opposite side, you take the architrave which goes on the opposite side and you do the same. You put some glue on it, you pinch it at the top, make sure it's 90 degrees with the top architrave. Once that's 90 degrees, you could do a nail, use the nail gun at the top. Then what you're gonna have is two side architrave hanging out at the bottom. If you've got a straight wall, it will be very close to the wall. And if, if you've got a wobbly wall, then it might just be dangling a little bit, which is uh, no problem because those architraves are very thin and they can easily um, bend. So once you're there, what you need Need is to put some glue on the last piece of architrave that is left which is the bottom piece and you press it against the wall again where the pencil was drawn out and you measure it again that the side uh, architrave is at a 90 degree angle and you can nail gun and that's it you've got your frame so um, you can see like if there's any gaps or wobbliness etc just use the nail gun first yeah, so that's it. You've got your first outer frame and now you just need to reproduce the exact same steps everywhere so that you've got all your frames together. Once we've laid out all the frames... Oh, there's a plane now. That's gone.
and then you can just look at your friends and be like I've achieved something today proud not finished yet. So what you need to do next is to fill space between the architrave. And that's really important. Even if it's like matching nicely against it, it will provide better integrated look. You probably need, I think we needed two to do everything because we, we have double frames, so everything is doubled. So you need to take the wood filler gun and go all around the frame on the inside and the outside. And you need to do it, obviously, if you've got two frames, you need to do it again here. And the method that we've employed is that my partner does the nail gun and I go behind him with a wet sponge and I just clean the wood filler as he goes through. Once that was done, I waited one day for the wood filler to dry and then I proceeded with painting the architrave. I needed two coats for that, that were already primed. So that's it and it was done. And all I needed to do was to hang up those beautiful frames. Right. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this type of content, feel free to subscribe on eating the box down below. I publish videos about my home, how we do DIY and how to live a better life at home to design a relaxing home. Um, yeah, and good luck in your projects and see you soon. <laughs>